I am visiting Bill again in the Green Mountains of Vermont during this cold winter to see how he's getting along, heating his home with wood, and what tips he might have for us. If you'd like to see a full tour of his super insulated home, check out the links in the description below. It's February 12th, because I think that's important to know that, you know, we're halfway through the winter. The type of wood that I'm burning is a lot smaller. In fact, it's been, been uh, had people tell me that, why are you, what's all this kindling for? But with the house being as efficient as it is, this is the size of the wood that we're typically, typically burning. Well, the pile is about 10 feet long. Uh, again, when it started winter, it was about six feet high. And the firebox is 18 inches, so the wood's a little less than 18 inches in, in length. Um, and this pile over here is for next year. When this is full, this holds about, uh, you know, a little less than three quarters of a quart of wood. So, and we've gone through a little less than half of that uh, here, here in the middle of February. So I'm getting ready to uh, start a little fire here. We haven't had a fire since uh, last night. Uh, and if we look at the thermometer, um, it's still uh, 66 degrees in here. This heats the entire house. Um, again, it has about an 18 inch firebox on it. Uh, and we'll go ahead and, and give it a start try. So one thing I do like to do is I find enjoyment in actually starting the fire with junk mail. Uh, I don't know what it, what it is about it, but it helps me to just get by the fact that we get so much junk mail a day. Uh, the key I found the fire making is just, you know, having enough kindling in there, uh, enough of this paper to kind of get things started. That way we don't have to really use uh, stuff that's really too, too small. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the uh, damper. Uh, and now I'm gonna open the air, outdoor air intake. So this is a manufactured home rated stove so it has a uh, air intake into the air box and what I've done is I have an insulated uh, air inlet coming in and I put a slide gate in the back that they use for wood shops to kind of turn on, on and off their vacuum. So this is our indoor wood pile. So this will last us uh, two or three weeks at a time. So when it gets down I go out and do a couple loads in to fill it back up. Typically keep, try to keep the smaller stuff to one side and the larger, a bit larger stuff to the other side. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull off some wood here and, and start, off, start a little fire. fire up. So that wasn't a lot of wood. No. Um, so that would be about the type, the amount of wood that we would use to kind of get the fire going, and that would last, uh, you know, an, you know, two hour, you know, hour or two. Um, one other thing that you might notice is the big uh, thermometer <laughs> up on the stove pipe, uh, and I find that just really handy to have something like that to be able to kind of tell what the temperature of the fire is. And so, because I don't have a perfectly straight chimney, it kind of goes up and then goes at a horizontal and then back up, which I do not recommend. So when you're putting your wood stove in, make sure you have a straight chimney uh, that goes all the way up through the roof. Uh, but because of that, I have to run this at a little bit higher temperature. We did have, have an issue uh, the first year we put this in. Uh, we weren't running it at a high enough temperature and actually uh, that horizontal pipe had gotten uh, plugged up, but since then uh, 
we've been running at a higher temperature we've never had any any issues so we put the stove in in about 2005 yeah 2005 I think so uh, we've been running it now for quite a few years and I've just kind of perfected the uh, uh, the ability to, to run the thing smoothly. In the vertical pipe, when I brush it out, uh, there'll be a little ash in it. Uh, but this horizontal pipe, I need to have somebody to help me to remove it just because of uh, it's awkward. And that will have, uh, you know, little build up. Uh, but again, because of the higher temperatures, it's not creosote that's in that pipe, but you do get definitely more ash in that horizontal run there. What are you holding? So I'm holding actually the, the damper, uh, the ash door flap open. And I found that that just helps get the fire up to temperature quicker. And the idea is the quicker that the, uh, you get the fire up to temperature, the less creosote or whatever you're going to have coming out. So by doing this, I eliminate any creosote uh, building up in, in the pipe. Uh, so it looks like a rocket actually. Uh, taking off here um, and I'll bring it up to about uh, 550 degrees uh, to start with and then then the fire will kind of take over from there um, I have to watch it when we first start it because we may have to kind of push the uh, the damper in because it may may have a tendency to overheat sometimes but uh... Uh, when we go to bed is to actually close the damper in the front and close the air intake in the back of the stove it sounds a little counterintuitive but uh, when we weren't doing that that's when we were having problems with uh, the carbon monoxide detector going off since we've done that we've been running it now for 10 years a uh, wood stove actually heats the entire house um, it's nice that it's located down on the, the first floor here because uh, enough heat goes up that open stairway to make the upstairs and the downstairs will be pretty even in temperature. Uh, or on a, a cloudy day where it's, uh, let's say it's sub-zero, we may be loading this, uh, it's possible a, you know, a little less than a dozen times maybe putting a couple sticks of wood wood in the in the fire uh, during the day but again we can't run a big active burning fire like this all day because it'll even on a sub-zero day you'll overheat the space it'll get up over you know it'll get 80 degrees down here and it uh, kind of limit to comfort at that point mm -hmm. so yeah so we're kind of, kind of letting it burn down throwing a couple more sticks on there it'll have a nice kind of bright fire for a little bit um, and then you know we'll we'll do that period periodically. We have a little tile around here, but this is pretty lightweight. It's just tile on a cement backer board. So the thermal mass in this area actually is the insulation itself, because we got 12 to 13 inches of cellulose, dense packed cellulose in these walls. It is acting as our thermal mass, and it keeps it. Uh, you know, it keeps that temperature stable. So the way that we're using using this uh, wood stove is, you know, we're not burning it all night long. We're not getting up and having to put wood in it. And one of the reasons why is we have re really good insulation here. We got between 12 and 13 inches of dense pack cellulose in the walls. And secondly, the cellulose itself is acting as thermal mass. So that if we go to bed and it's uh, 70 degrees down here in the morning, it'll coast. You know, again, we're not putting any more wood on it all night long. By morning time, it might be down you know, on a really, really sub-zero day, 65 degrees. But that's just a five degree. And in the morning, you can start it up again. It comes right back up the temperature um, without any extra, you know, big slabs and things like that uh, soaking up the heat. So the Cellulose itself acts as both the insulator and the thermal mass to keep this space comfortable down here and uh, upstairs as well since it is heating the entire house. Uh, so I sweep the chimney myself uh, once a year, usually in the fall. Uh, I have it rigged up where I can take the cap off the bottom and it's a straight shot. I can sweep out the vertical section and then uh, I'll take this pipe off 
So this pipe actually is where the majority of the ash actually accumulates and it's in the horizontal run of the chimney which again I would not recommend you having. So um, put in a wood stove, nice straight insulated pipe going all the way up through the roof. Uh, that's going to be work the best and have the least amount of uh, concern with any kind of creosote or anything building up in the in the chimney. Yeah, um, so if I did this again today, I would do it again with the wood stove. Um, wood stove, I, I like wood heat. I like the idea that literally in the 18 years that we've been here, I haven't had to cut down a tree. Uh, I just, you know, find wood that's dead wood that's fallen down and, and cut it up. And that's why you see a lot of sticks in my, <laughs> my wood pile. Um, but it just feels good to not have to be, you know, basically deforesting, de you know, clear cutting the forest to provide heat for the, the, the house there. And again, the super insulated house is what makes it all happen. Um, this stove, you know, is actually oversized for the, for the house. Um, you know, a, a, a stove that's properly sized, one that would be designed to basically be able to burn all day long, that stove would probably be this big. Unfortunately, that means the wood is a lot shorter and it means the wood pile, in my mind, the wood pile is a lot more likely to fall over. Mm -hmm. So this is why we have this stove here. And again, it's worked out pretty well. It's a Napoleon stove from, from Canada. And uh, it also has a cooktop. So in the times that, you know, a couple times where the power has gone out, um, we can run this, it does have a blower on it, which will kick on when it gets up to temperature, but uh, it can be run without the blower and we can actually cook on the top of it, which just gives you a little extra ability to, to have a place that's warm and uh, have something to eat or drink, hot drink when, when the power's out. <laughs> mm -hmm.